Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Troy and today we are building another rally car to take down our rally stage. <laughs> So today we're going to be building this, it is the Citroen BX4TC, it's the rally version, the wide body version of the Citroen BX. Um, in the last episode we took the Lancia Delta Integrally down the rally stage, it was an all wheel drive rally car and that thing did very very well, it's up there in ninth place, it was in the top 10, beating the hatchback Subaru STI and the 22B, which are both all-wheel drive rally cars as well. So that thing did very, very well. And I enjoyed building an actual rally car in the last episode. So I thought, let's do it again today. And I've just unlocked this Citroen. It's part of the event week this week. And I thought it would be perfect to go ahead and build this thing for our rally car. So let's get into it. It starts off in C class, but I know for a fact that we can get this thing up into S1 class with some upgrades. Now, this thing is all-wheel drive, like I said. Um, it has a 2.1 litre um, engine with a turbocharger, so I'm going to leave the stock engine in it for now. We might come back and upgrade that later. Um, as far as body kits go, it does have this wide body kit already, which is really cool. Um, we can go ahead and add a stupid little splitter down there. Uh, we can add Forza Aero or we can remove the Citroen spoiler. I like the Citroen spoiler and I'm not a fan of Forza Aero. So we're going to go ahead and just leave that. Yes, it does give us a bit of a traction bonus if we were to go and apply that. But we're not going to bother. Um, all the vehicles are fitted with the off-road tyre compound. We're going to fit the widest tyres we possibly can to this thing. Um, we're going to leave the stock wheels, because that's what we've been doing with all the other vehicles. Um, the track width. We could go ahead and increase the track width just a little bit. Um, that's going to give us a little bit more stability, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll maybe get a little bit of poke going in the front there. That looks lovely. Um, we might as well make use of that wide body. Then we're going to go ahead and put in the race clutch. We'll put in the race transmission. It's going to allow us to tune all of these parts of the car. Uh, then we want to go ahead and put in the rally differential. We're going to apply the best brakes we possibly can and fit this thing on some off-road springs and dampers. Then we're going to go ahead and reduce as much weight as possible. So we start off with 2,700 pounds, so just over a ton. We get down to 2,300 pounds, so it is near enough um, a ton in weight, which is not terrible because it is quite a big car. The wide body kit probably adds quite a bit of weight, although I imagine that's probably fiberglass. Um, and then we get into the exciting stuff. This is where we're going to make some power. So we start off with almost 200 horsepower, which is a fair amount for um, a sort of 1980s car on the road. But as rally cars go, that is shockingly poor. So let's go ahead and start just slapping in the power on here. I'm just going to go for full upgrades in all of this. All of these engine options. Um, and then we'll leave the turbo. We'll come back to that. Let's see if we can get it up into S1 class. Just with the regular upgrades. Not quite. We're just below. But then if we upgrade the turbo. It's going to put us just up into S1 class. So we can go for the um, sport turbo. The race turbo. And then we have the race turbo with anti-lag. But since this series started before anti-lag was added to the game um we're not allowed to use it so yes if i was building this for online racing of course i would go with the anti-lag turbo it's much more efficient but we're just going to go with the race turbo it's going to bump us up to 500 horsepower so not a whole bunch 
Um, compared to some of the vehicles we have been running, that is um, not a huge amount of horsepower. But we are fairly light. A ton is um, quite light compared to some of the vehicles we have been running. Especially some of the more recent vehicles, the SUVs and things like that. Um, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and find a nice Citroen Racing livery for this. And I'll meet you guys out on the rally course. Okay, here we go in the Total Racing Citroen BX4TC. I believe this is the first French vehicle we've taken down the rally course. So we've got the Citroen representing France in this rally tournament. I've gone with the 1986 Monte Carlo Rally livery here. I think it looks very, very fitting since we are rallying. This thing is absolutely rapid off-road. Keep to the right hand side of that water splash. Hitting the rev limiter a little bit, so that's something that we can work on. This is just going to be a shakedown run, just to see how the car's performing, let it settle in, get me used to driving this thing, because I have been driving this thing on the road, but I haven't driven this thing as a rally car yet, so we will see how this goes. A little bit wide there. Okay, now this section can be a little bit bumpy. Citroen are renowned for having the best suspension on their vehicles, although we don't have the uh, hydrostatic suspension on this vehicle. A little bit wide through the hairpin there, but that's all right. We don't get any air on the jump coming into the next couple of corners here and then up the hill. We might have to tune the gears just a little bit in this thing because third is hitting the rev limiter and fourth is a little bit sluggish. We're going to have to have a dive on the brakes there, but we crest at about 105, so not terrible. Yeah, this thing does feel a little bit sluggish when you get it up into the higher gears. The anti-lag turbo would have helped with that, but we can't apply that turbo in this series unfortunately coming into the last couple of corners here we get the thing sideways but the all-wheel drive is fighting it i'm doing my very best to keep it on the road and here we go for the final run down the hill we cross the line at a 2 11.532 that is going to put this thing in uh, 15th place already so we're in the top 15, just above the Mercedes 6x6 and behind the Ford F450 Super Duty. Um, so we've got a lot of room for improvement there. I'd like to see this thing in the top 10. And we only need to shave off a second to get this thing into the top 10. All right, big room for improvement with the Citroen. I know how this thing handles now. I know what the gearing is like. It does like to sort of wallow about a bit on the tarmac here. You can see there it is a little bit floppy. But as soon as we get it onto the dirt, this thing is brilliant. I really like how this thing handles. I like the Lancia in the last episode. This thing is a born and bred rally car. And when you build it as such, it just handles absolutely beautiful. It sticks to the dirt like it was on tarmac. It is just incredible. Now this thing does feel a little bit heavier than the Lancia, that felt very nimble. This thing feels a little bit bulkier, a little bit bigger. Feels like there's a little bit more weight to get around. We get the vehicle sideways through there, that was lovely. We get it rotated, that's what rally car drivers are always saying, rotate it through the corner. I've biased the differential 65% to the rear axle, so we can get a bit of oversteer. That was a bit too much oversteer. We got a big bounce in the rear end there. And that slowed us down for the hairpin quite a bit. We're wide again on the hairpin, hitting the rev limiter. Not fantastic section through there, I have to admit. Now up the hill, here we go. Let's see what we can do. Get the thing up the hill. This is much better. We crest at 110. Gonna have a little dab on the brakes and knock it down a gear. 
that's going to get that turbo spooled up for this section through here and then we come on to the worst corner of the track I still haven't figured out quite how to take that corner properly some vehicles you want to turn in early some vehicles just get around it beautifully this thing I'm not sure the front end is darting around a little bit as you can probably see it was doing that through this section last time we're a little bit wide on the exit of that corner but down the hill it's gonna be an improvement a 2 and 9 point five six three that is going to put this thing quite a bit up the leaderboard uh, in eighth place above the bentley continental so we've got this thing already two places above the lancia from the last episode just behind the all-electric porsche taycan so i'd like to beat that thing we've got the riven rivian r1t in front of the porsche which was also electric uh that did a 27 so let's see if we can beat a 27 um i'd like to beat the two electric vehicles because i think this citroen is a really cool vehicle um and it has a lot of potential okay here we go we've got a 27 to beat we've got to shave off almost another two seconds off our lap time let's see what we can do we're going to keep it nice and tight through the tarmac section here and then onto the dirt. We almost jump across that water splash. I'm going to go silent a little bit in this run just to concentrate as much as possible. I still don't know where the braking zones are with this thing. The brakes don't feel fantastic, and then other times they work amazingly well. So here we go. We get through the water splashes with relative ease. A big dive on the brakes through there because we do get a jump coming into that corner. All right, let's rotate it nicely through this corner here. Well, that was beautiful through there. Onto this bumpy section. Right, we don't want any oversteer through here. We're going to try and keep it tight to the right hand side. Going to have a little dab on the brakes. That was much better through that section. Get it slowed down for the hairpin. Rotate it beautifully through there. That is how we want to take the hairpin. That was much, much better than the last two runs. Let's have a dive on the corner for these brakes. A little bit on the grass, but that's okay. That can be a faster line sometimes. Up the hill, here we go. Keep it tight into the apex. Little dab at the top of the brake. At the top of the hill, sorry concentration is highly focused on the driving right now so speech has gone out of the window we're a little bit wide through there a little brush on the trees that will cost us maybe a tenth we've slowed down a little bit in this last last section here but it isn't bouncing around like it has done on the last couple of runs third gear down the hill here we go it's going to be an improvement. We crossed the line. It was a 2-7, but is it enough to beat the Rivian RT1? Yes, it is. We have done it. Um, that is going to put the Citroen BX4TC uh, in sixth place above the Rivian R1T and just behind the Ford Bronco R, a 2-0207 uh, Point five nine four is the time for the Citroen. Let's go to the leaderboard and see how this thing compares. And there we have it. The Total Racing Citroen BX4 TC has done a 27.594. That's enough to put this thing in 6th place above the all-electric pickup Rivian R1T and the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Sadly, couldn't quite make it into the top five, just behind the Ford Bronco R there, and the Ford Focus RS from the first episode, but I am very, very pleased with how the Citroen has performed. It has uh, represented France very, very well 
in our little rally stage here it's an awesome looking car it drives fantastically like i said earlier it sticks to the uh course like it was on tarmac it has so much grip that all-wheel drive is just fantastic and more importantly it has beaten the lancia delta from the last episode so we are slowly climbing up the leaderboard are we going to knock that lamborghini huracan off its top position with our next vehicle tune in next week to find out uh, but thank you so much for watching this episode if you did enjoy it make sure to smash the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more rally episodes and i will see you in the next video